Hi, I'm Lauren Bregitzer, and I'm going to give you a tour and an overview of the effects in Ableton Live 11. So to get to the effects, I'm going to go to my browser, make sure it's showing here on the left, and I'm going to click on the audio effects category. And you can see in Ableton Live 11, these are categorized, whereas in pre previous versions, they were just all listed there alphabetically. So you can, you can kind of jump into whichever folder based upon what you're looking for. But let's do a quick overview of what's, what's in each of these. So there's delay and loop here. And inside we have beat repeat. We'll just go through these in order. Beat repeat uh, is sort of a cool audio effect. Uh, great for like drums and stuff like that. Um, I'd recommend... Uh, I'm going to solo the drums here. Um, I would recommend uh, jumping to a preset. A lot of times I'll grab like uh, the fill in the gaps preset. So to get the effect on something, I can either have that track selected and double click on it, or I could drag and drop it onto the track or in the order on the uh, 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 detail viewer here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop it on the track because I want it to be at the end and it will default to being at the end. So this puts that fill in the gaps preset there. I can see down here in the lower right that that fill in the gaps is there. So now when I play it, uh, just hearing those drums uh, without it, here's without. Here's with it on. And sometimes I like the micro fills. You can check that one out. So it can do some cool rhythmic stuff. If you want to find out how to program it yourself, you can always look that up in the manual. And the next up we have is the delay. So the delay automatically shows up on the return track B, but if I wanted to add it onto a specific track, like say this guitar track here, um, let me select it. And so I'm just going to drag that delay. So again, I can open up the presets there, but I just usually grab the delay, just drag it on there and dial into what I want. Um, so you can see there, it's synchronized, it's got 50% feedback. So this is its default setting. If it's too much, you can dial, in the, dial it down the dry and wet. If you want a stereo width thing, you can turn on the ping-ponging. And you can use the filter. So that's the delay. All right. Next one, we have Echo. So Echo is new in Ableton Live 10. Um, it's it's similar to the delay, but it gives you more, it has some emulation functions of old style analog devices. So it's just a uh, more featured delay, really, if you want to look at it that way. So again, you know, I could do ping pong sounds. Turn down the dry wet. And I can, this is time to eighth notes. You can adjust that to uh, 16th notes. And have the filter on there. Also some modulation and character settings that you can get into if you want. Um, next up is a filter delay. Let's drop that on there. This allows you to have sort of different filters on different frequency filters on the different delays. So you can have fun with that one. Grain delay does granular synthesis on the delay, so that you can do some fun real-time control with that. So that was pretty fun. Um, and looper, not much I could directly do with looper. Uh, it's more for live performances where you can actually record and loop in real time and layer on top of yourself. So if you do some like looping guitar action, uh, Looper is great for that. Uh, spectral Time is new in Ableton Live 11. That's good for creating sort of ethereal weird sounds. Um, you can freeze it. So you can do some crazy stuff with that. All right, next up we have is drive and color. 
the driving color catalog, a category, I should say. Uh, these two, this amp and cabinet, they kind of go together. They're basically uh, guitar simulators. So one emulates the guitar amplifier and the other one does the cabinet. So you can choose from clean, boost, blues, etc., cetera. Um, and, you know, standard like guitar uh, amp controls. You can also have a, a dry, wet knob if you want to kind of bring it down. Now, it doesn't have to be just guitar. I oftentimes use these amp and cabinet on things that aren't guitar. But uh... So that's just the amp. Let's add the cabinet on it to make it sound more like a guitar. Change the mic. Change the type of cabinet. So that one I use, both of those I use quite a bit. Sometimes I'll use just the cabinet, sometimes I'll use just the amp. All right, another one that came out with Ableton Live 10 is Drum Bus. So just on this drum track here, it's really designed to sort of be an all-in-one, make drums more in your face sort of thing, but it has a couple of cool features that I use on a lot of different tracks, not specifically just drums. So I drop the Drum Bus on here and automatically just by default, it's gonna sound bigger and louder because it has this drive cranked up and also has uh, a, a little soft drive on there. So on, off. I usually dial down the drive. Now, one of the main things I use it for, um, I use it for boom. So that'll actually add these sub frequencies to your kick drum. So it'll add a lot more beef to it. So I crank up that boom. Another one that I'll use separately on, you know, percussion or even synth parts is this transients. This allows you to have more transients or that like peak of the sound sort of poking through. So you'll hear the attacks a lot more when I crank up this transients. Very useful. So I'll use that quite a bit for that as well. All right. Next up we have is this dynamic tube. So the dynamic tube is, you know, a tube emulator. Stuff like this is good to sort of jump in and grab a preset. Let's go into this guitar again. If I grab the dynamic tube, um, maybe I want to pick a preset by clicking on this triangle. I might grab, usually I just start off with this uh, warm tube because usually I'm trying to make things a little bit warmer. Um, So you get that you know, a little bit of breaking up sort of distortion when I increase that drive. So it does a pretty nice tube emulation. Erosion is kind of a cool special effect here. Uh, if I just gonna drag that across here. And this is something you can kind of play in, with in real time. Uh, you just listen to hear what it does. So you could use that for sort of a digital lo-fi sound but I personally prefer a different one I'll show you here in a second. Um, Overdrive is another sort of distortion plugin. Let's drop that on there. So you have a lot of options if you wanna like distort or fatten up or thicken up your sound. So Pedal is another new one in Ableton Live 10. Um, or actually, yeah, Live 10, it came out. Um, so it basically mimics different pedals, an overdrive, a distortion, and a fuzz pedal. I use this quite a bit if I want to like distort something up. Uh, maybe I'll put on one of these synth parts. So say I have uh, like this synth sound here. Can drag it on there. That's an on, off. So all three of these modes are useful. And I use them quite a bit on a lot of different things. All right, Redux. So Redux is one that I use quite a bit if I want a sort of more uh, retro digital sound. What this does is this creates digital artifacts, um, quantization error by reducing the bit depth and aliasing by reducing the sample right there. So you can create sort of those, you know, 8-bit digital devices, video game type sounds. Um, 
add that grit with the uh, bits, and this will create these aliasing frequencies. So if you're looking for like a digital lo-fi sound, Redux is great for that. Saturator is one of the more common of the sort of drive warming up sounds. I usually grab the a bit warmer preset and drop it on something. Let's drop it on this guitar part here. Now, one tip that I'll give you is you can see this drive is cranked to 6 dB. Just turning it on and off makes it sound better, goes to make it sound louder. What I usually do is I bring down the output to compensate for that drive. So I sort of match that. What was it? 6.19. I can just click on it and type minus 6.19. And that will match the input and outputs together so you don't hear that gain change. So you're not uh, biased by the difference in loudness. So it sounds like this. So it makes it sound a little richer, warmer, a little more in your face. Um, so saturator is great for that. And vinyl distortion is uh, sort of tries to emulate a vinyl record. Um, and I'll just grab one and just show it to you. Uh, let's grab a uh, crack. Like my record's cracked. So you can play with that, and it can be kind of fun. I typically prefer the a free one that you can get from Isotope. They have a free vinyl emulator, and you can download that, which one I prefer a little bit, a little bit better. All right, so we move on to Dynamics. So Dynamics, we have a compressor. Um, compression is sort of a big topic here, so I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the compressor here. Now, by default, it should have this makeup gain on. I have mine turned to be off. But I just basically, if I want, if I want to make things come out a little cleaner, a little or a little closer to you, um, limit the dynamic range. A compressor is great for that. So I'm gonna bring down my threshold. So you can hear the dynamics being tremendously affected. Now I'll have to turn the makeup gain off and just adjust the output manually. There's other things you can do, but that would be a whole separate topic. All right, next up is the gate. So I'm going to grab this gate and put it on the tambourine track. So gate will basically, when you set it correctly, you can minimize softer sounds and open up for the louder sounds or eliminate softer sounds. So you can have different functions with the gate. You can also use cool, do cool like EDM sound design with that. Um, but if I drop it on this tambourine track here, let me turn it off. So you can hear the one loud hit and then the softer hits. I can set the gate so I just have those loud hits. So I'm going to grab it and lower the threshold. Adjust the hold a little bit. Increase your release time. So I've gotten rid of those little shakes. Off. On. So that's what the gate does. All right, glue compressor is sort of similar in sound to the legendary SSL bus compressor. So it's good across your stereo mix or submix tracks. A lot of times I'll put it across my drum tracks because there's a bunch of instruments together. Um, so it's really the glue or like the carpet in the Big Lebowski where it really ties the room together. Um, so I've dropped that on the master track, but typically what I do is I grab a preset, I'll grab the glue compressor and I'll grab this mastering make it loud preset, drop it on there and uh, hit play. Is it on? Off. On. So everything's a lot more in your face with that. So it's one of my most used compressors on here. Um, and a lot of the devices that I use a lot, a lot, I'll set up to be in my favorites category. So I'll right click and set it to favorites. So you can see it has that red box next to it. So if I click to favorites, I can just jump right to it. Um, so I don't have to sort through these folders if I don't want to. Limiter is good for like slamming things, making it loud. You can potentially use it for, for uh, mastering, but I prefer the sound of other digital limiters, but you can drop it on a, across a track and just make it louder. <laughs> So 
So it's good for that kind of thing. And the last one is multi-bay dynamics. Uh, that one's a tricky one to use. It should really have its own video. Uh, the one thing I'll point out is this like OTT preset, which is pretty famous. If I grab that and drop the OTT across a track, uh, like this drum track here, I'm going to start with it off. And you'll hear it transform and just sort of like slam in your face in sort of a uh, edgy sort of way. Off. On. I'm going to increase the output. So if you're big into making EDM and and beats that are in your face, OTT is great for that. All right, let's jump into EQs and filters. So we have auto filter. Auto filter is great. Um, I use that a lot of times uh, for automation if I want to like do some filtering effect on there. So I drag that to across a track and you can just dial down that frequency. So I have these drums here and I want to do some sort of real time filtering. I can automate that in there. I mean, it does a lot more than that. It has a lot of different emulations. Uh, it has the clean OSR, MS2, SMP, PRD, different types of filters. You can read about those over there on the left-hand side on the info viewer. All right, next up is the channel EQ. So channel EQ is basically kind of a simplified EQ. Uh, if you look at it, you can see that it just basically has a low, mid, and high, and a high-pass filter and an output and the only frequency you can really adjust is that mid frequency. So, you know, it's similar to like a, a like Mackie mixer or something like that. You just have minimal EQ, which is a lot of times what you need. So if you're just starting with EQing, this may be good one to just get a feel for what you're doing. Boost the highs, cut them, lows, mids. Adjust my mid frequency. High pass filter. So it's a good straightforward EQ. Now, the main workhorse for EQs is this EQ8. It's an eight band EQ, uh, fully parametric, and you can blow it up to fill the screen if you want to. So um, I can zoom up, I can click this triangle, and you can see it fill up the whole screen. So it starts off with four bands, but you can engage a total of eight different bands on here. So it's uh, fully parametric, and you know you can adjust the width and it does a lot more other stuff. So it actually does mid side EQ and can EQ the left and right sides differently if you want. Um, so it's a pretty powerful EQ and it's very easy to use. So I use this on every track, every track. And the last one is EQ3. So this one's good for cutting frequency. So if you wanna automate the cutting of things, if you look at it, you can see it just basically has, I can attenuate the lows, mids or highs or you can set up to, and you can adjust the uh, um, cutoff frequencies. But the nice thing is you can just, I just use this to like mute certain frequencies. If I want to mute the high frequencies, I can do that. Mute the mid frequencies. Mute the high, low frequencies. So it's pretty great um, for that kind of thing, for DJing, for cutting, that kind of thing. All right. So just looking at these modulars or modulators, uh, you have the CV, CVN, LFO, CV Shaper, Envelope Follower, LFO Shaper. We'll get into those later. Uh, CV is only for control voltage stuff. Now, Envelope Follower and LFO and Shaper are things that you can use to modulate parameters um, in real time. And we'll get to that later on because that's sort of different than standard audio effects. All right, next is pitch and modulation. Auto pan. Uh, auto pan is pretty fun. I'm going to drop that on this guitar track here. And auto pan allows you to sort of pan things in time. So if I look at it, I can just uh, play that, that the guitar part and increase the level. And it moves around left to right. So it does this at one hertz or one cycle per second. You actually do it in musical notes. You can set to 16th notes. You may want to do it in you know half notes. So it'll pan in time with your song. Um, I do like to use a random function. 
I just kind of want to like place things in sort of random places. Increasing my. So it's good for that kind of thing. If you want to get some motion in something, it might sound like it's still in one place. Uh, chorus ensemble. That's uh, good on like synths and keyboards and guitars. I'm going to drop that on this guitar part here. Um, has basically a standard uh, chorus sound. I'm going to maybe grab a preset. I'm going to just grab chorus classic. Drop it on there. So I add sort of like this warbliness to the pitch. Uh, ensemble is a similar kind of thing. Good for string patches, choirs, that kind of thing. Uh, vibrato will will modulate the pitch up and down. So, so you can use that for certain things as well. All right, moving on. Frequency shifter kind of does what it says. It shifts the frequency to up or down. It also does rig modulation. That's pretty fun. Um, I, and this phaser and flanger, this is definitely um, a guitar-centric sort of uh, effect, except for maybe the doubler. The doubler might be good on vocals, but this is a phaser. Flanger. Doubler. So there you go, pitch and modulation. Next up is reverb and resonance. So first up is this corpus. So that's, this does uh, sort of a, uh, let's put it on the drum tracks. Um, corpus does these uh, metal resonances. So you can see down here, it's set to beam. Actually change the material. So this has a lot of really cool sound design possibilities with it. Um, now the newest one, this is in Ableton Live 11, is this hybrid reverb. Um, I'm gonna drop this on the guitar part here. So hybrid reverb has two reverbs in it. It has a convolution and an algorithmic reverb. So right here, you can see this blend knob. It gives you both an equal amount of uh, convolution and an algorithmic reverb. And I have a video that details this one this whole reverb. So you can check that out if you want to learn more about it. But if I want to use just the convolution, which a lot of times maybe that's what I want to do, or maybe I want to use just the algorithmic, you can turn the blend all the way left or all the way right if you want. Um, then I can go, okay, now I want um, a hall and you can pick out a hall. Let's pick out a uh, uh, town hall. So now I can play it. Sounds pretty nice. So there's a lot of different IRs you can choose from springs. If I want it to sound like it's a spring. So that one has a lot of potential, a lot of fun with it. So resonators, this one, um, put it on there. This one's been around for a while. It just resonates on different pitches and you can choose those here. So this has a lot of real-time sound design possibilities as well. Reverb is the old school, original Ableton Live reverb. Um, it sounds fine. If you want, I usually prefer the hybrid reverb, but it, it sounds, good for a lot of things. Uh, make sure to set the quality to high. Eco is fine if your computer was built in 2004 or if you want sort of a grittier sound, but by default, I'd set to high, make sure it's set to high. Yeah, sounds like it's in a space. All right, Spectral Resonator. This is a new one. So this is in Ableton Live 11. Um, So 
that's pretty fun. So you do a lot of fun sound design stuff with that. Um, vocoder is good for two tracks. Um, it'll take more to set up than be worth, but this would be create those vocoder sounds like you'd hear on like Beastie Boys Intergalactic or um, Styx's uh, Mr. Roboto. That uh, says that sort of synth robot sound is what you use it for. And there's other things you can do with that. All right, next up is utilities. Now I'm going to skip these control voltage ones because that's part of their CV utilities. Audio effects rack allows you to combine a bunch of these. So we'll skip that for the time being. Let's jump into spectrum. Spectrum is just a spectrograph, so you can see the frequency content of what's going through it. It won't affect the sound at all. It just gives you an analysis of the frequency content. There are other free ones available that you might find are a little better. Um, another one, anytime I plug in my guitar into Ableton Live, I use this tuner. It's just a straight up, you know, tuner like you'd have in a pedal, but it's handy to have it just right when you plug your guitar right in your computer and have this. So it looks just like a guitar tuner and it works great. And last but definitely not least is this utility device. I use this quite a bit. Um, so I just usually drag it on tracks. Let me just drag it on this master bus here and just listen to everything. You can adjust the stereo width of the whole track if you want. Narrow it. I can mono the whole thing if I want. A lot of times if I need to automate the gain, I'll use the utility device and automate just the output here. Um, and another super helpful feature is this bass mono button. This will mono your low frequencies and really concentrate it evenly across the left and right speakers. It'll really tighten up your low end. So I highly recommend this bass mono function. You can even solo where the cutoff is. So it's a really helpful plugin, especially when you want to automate muting and volume changes. I use this a lot. It's a lot easier than just automating on a track and moving it around, that kind of thing. So that's my overview of all the audio effects in Ableton Live 11. So experiment with these and stay tuned for more videos.